Shuffle, shuffle, slurp, shuffle, slurp. Mai was suddenly awakened in the dead of night from an odd sound emanating from the closet. She couldn't see in the darkness, so she had to rely solely on sound. She could hear her brother Blong snoring lightly on the top of bunk above her, and the faint breathing from her eldest brother Fuchi on the other side of the room. Mai continued listening as the subtle sounds from the closet resumed along with her brother's rhythmic snoring and breathing. However, the noise from the closet would stop, only to start again. Mai had no idea how long it continued for, but it felt like hours had passed. Her eyes were getting heavy and she was drifting in and out of sleep until her body could no longer fight it. After the girl had fallen asleep, the closet door slowly creaked open in the dark room, followed by a slow, faint slurping sound and something dragging along the carpet. Fuchi grunted as the bed rocked violently. Something heavy thudded onto the floor. Footsteps scurried toward the bedroom door, followed by the flick of the light switch. The whole room lit up for a split second, followed by Fuchi's muffled scream as something yanked him off his feet. Slurp! The room was dark again. Something hit the floor, then dragged itself across it and into the closet, closing the door behind it with a click. Mai sat up from her bed in a cold sweat, panting heavily. It was already morning. She glanced over at Fuchi's bed. It was empty. Then she gasped and looked at the alarm clock. It was a weekday, and she had to get ready for school. Most likely her brother had already left as he always did, or at least she hoped he did. Mai woke up almost ten minutes late. She didn't hear the alarm so she figured Blong turned it off when he got up. Hurry up, Mai! We're gonna miss the bus! A voice shouted, startling her. It was Blong, standing by the bedroom doorway, already dressed for school. Mai couldn't concentrate in class at all. She was too preoccupied by the visions from the night before. She remembered hearing strange noises in the dark before the light came on momentarily. Time slowed, as the whole scene unfolded before her. Something long, dark, and slimy coiled itself tightly around her brother like a snake. It then gagged him, forcing itself into his mouth, silencing him for good. Her brother's eyes filled with so much terror as he stared straight at her before being dragged away and swallowed by the darkness. She'd never felt such dread and helplessness in her life. Had it been a dream, she wondered? Mai and Blong noticed their eldest brother wasn't home when they returned from school. Unless he had something planned, he always left home and returned before they did. While the kids snacked at the dining table, their mom prepared dinner for them. Where is Fuchi? Blong asked their mom with a mouthful of Cheetos. He went to a friend's house for the weekend, she replied, dividing a steamy pot of ramen noodle into two bowls on the kitchen counter. Great, now I'm stuck with Mai, said Blong. I hope Dad will be home at least. Well, no one likes you either, Ma retorted, sticking her tongue out at her brother. Your dad's still out of town for work, answered Mom, setting the bowls onto the dining table with a fork in each of them. Blong sighed. Ah, oh, man. Mai found it odd her mom didn't scold him for their rude behavior toward each other. She also thought it strange her mother was still in her white nightgown. She'd been wearing it for days, and her hair was a mess. Her mom also looked sick and pale. Worried, Mai stared at her bowl of ramen, then at her mom. She hadn't been eating dinner either. Mom, are you not feeling well? You haven't eaten dinner with us for almost a week, Mai asked. Mom stopped in her tracks as she turned to leave the kitchen, almost as if not expecting the question. She shook her head. I'll be fine, dear. I just need some rest is all. Maybe you should go see a doctor, Mai suggested. Yeah, Mom, you don't look too good, Plong added as he blew on the fork full of noodle. Don't you kids worry. I will be fine. Make sure to eat your food. I'm going to bed, replied Mom. Mai dreaded bedtime as it got closer and closer. She couldn't shake the ominous feeling that something was terribly wrong. That night, Mai checked the closet before bed. 
What are you doing? Blong asked. Nothing, answered Maya as she scanned the closet without taking her eyes away from it. Blong sighed. Quit being weird, Mai. You won't make many friends that way. She would have returned his insults, but the girl wasn't in the mood. There were more pressing concerns. After confirming there was nothing suspicious, she shut the closet door and headed off the bed. Filled with anxiety, Mai tossed and turned for a while before she eventually gave in to sleep. Slurp, slurp, slurp. Mai awoke right away, chills racing down her spine and goosebumps racing throughout her body. All the hairs on her body rose. The girl could make out the vague shapes and forms of the room as her eyes adjusted to the darkness. It was both a blessing and a curse as her paranoia was getting the best of her. Everything in the dark seemed overly frightening. The sounds were subtle but intentional. Whatever was moving around in the dark was getting closer and closer. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Mai wanted to run over to the light switch and turn it on, but her body wouldn't budge. Something slithered up the rungs of the ladder. A moment later, a huge shadow of a figure flashed downward from the top bunk with a yelp that was cut short as soon as it hit the floor. Though she couldn't see exactly what or who it was, Mai was almost sure it was Blong being attacked by the same thing that assaulted Fuchi the night prior. She gulped hard at the thought of it. The dark figure who Mai thought was her brother was then dragged underneath Fuchi's bed. It rocked violently as the attack continued. With enough courage summoned, Mai made a dash for the lights. The room lit up to reveal half of Blong's body sticking out from underneath the bed in a pool of his own blood his legs kicking wildly like a slaughtered chicken left to die in a bucket. Mai opened the bedroom door and raced to the front entryway. She frantically unlocked it and tried to open the door, but was unable to. It was as if the door was locked from the outside. Mai wanted to pound and kick the door and scream for help, even, but she didn't want to give her location away. Frustrated, Mai raced to the back door. It was no use. Like the front door, it appeared to be bolted from the other side. She paused, focusing on the sound. Shuffle. Shuffle. Slurp. Shuffle. Slurp. I glanced over her shoulder. The demon wasn't there yet, but it was getting closer with every slurp it made. Slurp. Shuffle. Shuffle. Slurp. Slurp. My was trapped. With no other place to go, she hesitantly entered the adjacent door leading down to the basement. Maybe I could hide from the demon down there, she thought. Other than a dim light at the end of the basement, it was pitch black. Using the railing as a guide, she made her way slowly and carefully down the stairs. A putrid odor lingered in the air, and she gagged. It intensified the further she went, taking everything she had not to throw up. The girl's trip seemed to go on forever as she felt around blindly in the darkness. There was also a faint buzzing noise that got louder and louder the closer she got to the light. At the end of the basement was a small room illuminated by a single light bulb with an attached pull string that swayed ever so slightly. The source of the buzzing and the smell seemed to be from the room. Mai paused a moment to compose herself. She covered her nose, then with a shuddering breath, she stepped inside. Her eyes widened, and her breath caught in her throat. In the dim orange light, and piled up in the corner were the corpses of her missing family members. The smell was unbearable, and the buzzing from the army of swarming flies was deafening. The corpses were in various stages of decay. Parts of their bodies seemed to have been chewed or ripped apart. Blood and gore coated the floor with strings of innards lay strewn about. Wiggling maggots poured and spilled from the empty sockets of their eyes, nose and gaping mouths. The only one with their eyes still intact was Fuchi, with his milky pupils staring blankly at the heavens above. Among the dead was a young girl. She was barely recognizable in her current state, but Ma recognized the floor dress immediately. It was one of her own. No, this can't be, 
she cried, shaking her head, her lips quivering. She backed away slowly and ran back toward the stairs. Midway through, the fluorescent light in the main part of the basement suddenly came on, and Mai slid to a stop. In the dark at the top of the stairs was her mother, or at least the thing that looked like her. It made its way down the stairs, dragging Blong's lifeless body by the ankle. The corpse bumped against each step as the demon made its way down, leaving a trail of blood. Thud. 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 The demon finally reached the bottom of the stairs and stepped into the light. Mai shot a look at Blong's body, then at the demon before her. The figure wasn't big, but it radiated a horribly intense energy that terrified Mai to the core. It looked exactly like her mother. There was blood smothered all over its mouth and cheeks, streaking down its chin and neck, soaking the white nightgown it wore. The demon's skin was pale with dark spiderweb veins throughout its body. It had blood-red eyes with dark snake-like pupils. Mai's eyes fixated on the tongue hanging out of its mouth. The thing was wriggling like a snake. As grotesque as it was, she found it hypnotizing. Slurp! In one swift motion, the tongue retracted into the demon's mouth before Mai could even blink. She instinctively recoiled. Amused at the feet, the demon gave a wide, toothy grin, exposing its gums and sharp, saw-like teeth. Why did you do this? Mai cried. Because it is in our nature. No different than a lion and a gazelle, replied the demon. How am I still alive? Mai asked. Silly child, you're dead as am I, replied the demon. I, I don't understand. Oh, but you will once the spell expires. What, what do you mean? The demon pointed to the room behind Mai. She turned, following its gaze. It explained that they were both demons and had to infiltrate the family by killing the mother and daughter, then taking their place. It was done for the sake of their own survival, since they both had to feed on human flesh and blood. The demon told her she had to be put under a spell so as not to give herself away. We are the last of our kind. Thanks to those blasted shamans, exclaimed the demon. The last mistake almost wiped out our entire family. I couldn't risk making another one. Upon hearing the story, Mai felt disgusted by herself. No, you're lying. I couldn't. I'm not like you. She cried, tears streaming down her cheeks, her voice trailing off into a whisper. The cries ceased as thousands of unfamiliar, horrific images flooded through her mind at once. Mai's memories faded away along with all the physical remnants of her. The only thing remaining was a young demon girl with pale skin and red serpentine eyes. Slurp! Her muscular tongue wrapped around the corpse laying at the taller demon's feet, standing it up. Then the young demon unhinged her jaw and began to devour the body from the head first until there was nothing left. Gulp. 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 Gulp.